Hi, Mandra Armstrong. Welcome to the back of his Teardown Lab. Another mystery kit today. This one is a total mystery because there's no instructions. So it's a mystery in the truest sense of the form. Oh, wow, look at that. And it has a power jack, so it's power related, interestingly enough. Now, I'm going to give you a heads up, guys, because if you go on the internet and you type in ICSK025A, you will know what this kit is and you'll know it before me because I'm going to look it up kind of after I've assembled it. It's an audio kit, I can tell that much. I can tell that much because it's got a headphone style jack. And there is a chip here, I'm just going to read the chip off. It's an LM386. An LM386 could be an amplifier. I kind of think it must be an amplifier. But then what do I know? I'm just sort of looking at these footprints, quite interesting. That's the footprint for that. It's quite low tolerance, really. It's a power thing, big electrolytic. There's not really much there. Two resistors, and one of them is a 1K. I think I'm just going to... Oh, there's some LEDs too. I'm just going to have to go ahead and just start soldering up all... I'm going to start with the little bits, actually, because I think if we put the big potentiometer on, we're going to have some serious trouble later. So just eyeballing this uh, circuit up. It's not particularly clear, this one, actually. 104, that's the capacitor, little ceramic. It's really weird, actually, because the printing on the back is really nice. <laughs> the printing of the silk screen on the top is terrible. Little capacitor, where do you go? So we've got our C4, C1, right here. There's quite a lot of pin headers too with this kit, so it makes me wonder uh, what are we supposed to be hooking it up to? Maybe it's a headphone amplifier. Seems elaborate though. Just looking for the LED. It's a kind of an LED a diode required here. Let's just crack on, shall we, with the bits we do know, and we'll worry about those bits we don't know later, because there's no doubt in my mind that I'm going to have to go onto the internet and actually see what this kit does anyway before I can actually hook it up finally with something. LM386. Hmm. Could be an audio amplifier. An op amp. Some people know those, just off by heart. They use them so often, all those LM devices. So we can start with some easy things. We've got three electrolytics, and we know that there's going to be some big footprints for them. So we've got a medium, a tiny. So this will be the medium here. Negative. Long lead's positive, remember. Long lead is positive. Come on now. Got some serious capacitorage going on there. really thought about it but do kits really need instructions we live in the day now where you buy any device you buy rarely comes with an instruction manual expect it to go online but there's something something about electronic kits which to me feels like you always need the uh, paper in front of you just it's just not convenient to refer to your phone or tablet Although, you might just hear in the corner that my phone has just listened to me and reacting to me. He's not happy. Again, just trim your le legs one at a time and if you want to preserve the lifespan of your side cutters. Jumpers. Jumpers for goalposts, and then a 4.7K. So let's get a 4.7K. We've only got two resistors here. So I'm going to use my meter of doom to see which is which. Four 
4.7k and then this one 1 meg which is what we were looking for k might make a little rig for resistors actually just to make it easy to work out their values just by plumbing them in every time here's the 1k I think I said 1 meg earlier that would be a big old resistor Kits be fun, guys. Okay, so they're not sitting quite as nicely as I'd like, but whew, who's gonna know? Just you and me and the rest of the internet. What else? What else, guys, would you do? You've got your chip carrier. You've got something here that says A plus and A minus. That looks like an audio input. Power jumper. So let's see, we've got six pieces of pins, so for pin headers, so we might as well try to put those in because they're going to be a pain. Because they're going to require contortion. Because they've got, they've got straight legs, they won't stay in place by themselves. So poke them through. Ah, so hot from behind. Next, it's just lightly tacked. And where's the third, third and final one? Right here. Right now, we can do a proper job. So I'm trying to think what use this would be if it is indeed a small headphone amplifier. You could probably use it as a practice amplifier if you're into some sort of instrument like a guitar. Or, probably inconveniently but possibly, you could use it for your uh, existing devices. So I'm just clearing up around me there we go for your existing devices like a uh, M, you know your phone or something because you could probably save a bit of your phone battery by uh, having the output of the phone very low and then having an amplifier boosting it up but you know you're, you're risking boosting up noise then too so you'd have to kind of tune it but you know you might get an extra few min minutes hours who knows out of your uh, phone It is quite unpleasant having uh, battery life anxiety. Probably the one thing that stops a lot of people really enjoying the use of their phone if they're out for a whole day. Oh, that's interesting. One of those uh, feet there doesn't actually have a uh, plated wire. See through there? There's no through hole. It's just a blind one. There we go. This is in. Where'd our IC go? Just gonna get this in right now because because I can. And people go, oh, but don't when it gets staticed to death. You know, I'm doing this technically on a piece of nylon carpet. Uh, so yeah, the answer is probably yeah, it will get static. To death, I don't know. Headphone socket next, I think. Again, won't stay in by itself. Bloody painful, these. Slowing me down, guys. It's really slowing me down. Okay, there we go. Stay, stay put. In fact, I can see this has already moved slightly, so I'm just gonna, you heard that crack? Crack, now it's aligned. 
There are certain things that really, once you get them in, you can't get them out again. Mm. This would probably be one of those, look like one of those items that would be hard to remove if you've put it in badly. Let's just tack this in gently. Let's see a big volume control. No volume knob. You're left to pick out your own knob. I have the power. 12 volts. Oh, 12 volts was the last kit. I'm making a big assumption saying that this one would be 12 volts. One volt. Just make sure it's aligned. Ow, 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 hot circuit. I think that would be alright, wouldn't it? Like that. It's a bit wobbly anyway. It's gonna stay in there now. That's it. I've had enough. He's aligned as much as he's ever gonna get. Bit mean, they didn't actually give you the nut that goes on the end of that to secure it to something. Right, I'm gonna go on the internet, have a quick look, see if that LED is there instead of a diode, and then I will report back. I'm back. Okay, it does look like they sent me two LEDs by mistake. So basically, this pin head is actually a power one, this one is actually an audio input. This is an audio input jack, and this is a speaker out. So, yeah, this is a Super duper little mini amplifier. So we're just going to go ahead and finish it off. And I get myself a nice spare red LED for something else. Put that on my shelf. Oops. I said put it on my shelf and just proceeded to throw it behind the shelf. Never to be found again. So that's our uh, circuit done. What more do you want, guys? We've finished. No, we haven't quite finished. We need to find a speaker. Right, so I found a microphone, so that's good. So we can try that in our audio input, and it's already got a jack on it. So, so there, maybe that'll work. How? That's excellent. Time saving. I've got some speakers here in a baggie. They, uh, they unfortunately don't have jacks on them. They're actually it's a sort of laptop style speaker, but I'm just going to tin the ends and solder it straight on the two sort of speaker pins. That's fine. If I can ever get it convinced to actually tin. Brr. Come on, boy. That's a one, and it's two. So technically, very much technically, this um, mic will have a kind of polarity. A plus. So there. Luckily, just luckily, I could see the uh, writing on the PCB still. We'll go around that way. Source voltage. Not sure actually. Um, however, let's just hook the power up while we're uh, while I'm pondering how many volts to feed this. Come on. 
it's almost as if the jumper headers don't like being soldered to. <laughs> Get over here. I know I could have found a power supply. But it's always so transient my playing of kits, it doesn't seem worth it almost. Ah oh, tell you what, it's starting to think about it being worth it now if this just continues. Come on, I can't be having with these shenanigans. Right, I'm gonna start it off. <laughs> Hello. They're going to start it off at five volts. We sort of pumped seven into it right away. Ooh. Okay, not really getting anything out of this. a Pringles can speaker microphone doohickey here let's grab its wire Might just zoom out guys I think you need to need to see this whole mess of stuff going on appreciation for what I'm up to let's pop in the Pringles you can hear it right it's doing a noise hello hello look into my eyes yeah. Okay, it certainly hits an amp. Hello. Ah. Quite all right. It's quite all right. So yeah, well, I don't know really what to say. I think it can uh, certainly drive a much larger speaker than this little poxy thing. So uh, it could be good. If you've got an old radio or something like that that you would like to fix, you know, because it's sort of output stage is busted, this would be perfect, you know, for sort of a mono desktop radio. Stereo is not so good, because I'm not sure how you'd really, uh, you couldn't get two to work if you had a pot to control the volume of both at the same time, but it's really not worth your time doing that. So yeah, I think this is a, a, an interesting kit. So I'll just show you again. It's the ICSK025A Super Mini Micro Tiny Amplifier. I'll leave links down below for eBay and Amazon, whoever else I can find them. Please feel free to like this video. In fact, likes are great because they show me that you've uh, actually watched it and you think, yeah, that's okay, Andrew. You're doing an okay job with that video. Um, and comment down below, ask me any questions, or really probably more likely you'll be telling me what I've been doing wrong. And please feel free to subscribe, I make videos every day and if you subscribe and you click the little notify icon it will let you know when my latest video is up. As ever, thank you for watching. <laughs>